Hi, welcome back. Um, another short video. What I wanted to talk about now was how can we take a set of real-world data and visualize its growth rate in such a way that allow us to uh, come up with a good population growth model. Okay, and we're going to break that into two different possibilities. We can either visualize the population as a function of population growth as a function of time or population growth as a function of the current population. So what we need to do is we need to be able to take our given data and to massage it into that right form. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this function called diff. And what diff does is it calculates successive differences. So um, when we run this on the command on the on our series, that's the census, then it takes the population in 1951, subtracts the population in 1950, and this is the difference between those two numbers. Now, uh, difference, what it's doing is it's saying, take this value, take the value that was in 1951 and subtract off the one that was before it. And uh, what we'd really like to do is we'd like to have this piece of data here in the 1950 line instead. And so we're going to do a little bit of a modification of the diff function. And instead of calculating the difference between 1951 and 1950, the one before it, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the 1950 minus 1951 by calculating the one after it. And that's what this census.diff of negative 1 is doing. It's calculating the difference between the number coming after it. And so if you think about it, the current population minus the future population is a negative number. And so we multiply that by negative 1. And that's going to now translate these numbers to be starting at 1950. Now, the reason why we want this here is because when we're talking about population growth, we want to talk about this number, this, 300, this 37 million people. We want that number to be divided by the current population, the population at 1950. So we want this to line up with the 1950 population number. And so if we take this diff and we divide by census, then what that's going to do is it's going to give us the value of the growth rate, where it's a fraction of the population, the amount that, that has grown. And we see that now we have this picture here that grow that has the growth rate as a function of the year where it is. And so what this would allow us to do is if we could find a function that uh, matches this trend, then we can use that and say, given a time, we can use the trend as the value that we want to, uh, as the value that we ex expect in the future uh, the, the, the growth rate to be. So if we drew a line here that we say this is a good trend, then we could expect maybe in 2030 the growth rate would be down here. All right, so that's one way to approach this. The other way we might decide to approach it is to plot the growth rate as a function of the current population. So if we want to do that, so if we have our growth function, then in that picture that we had from last time where we had the parabola, that parabola is exactly this picture where we have, based on the current population, how much do we expect the the future po the population to grow by and so we can take instead of plotting the growth rate as a function of time we can plot the growth rate as a function of the current population and this uses the exact same method that we used last time which is to plot the x values the current population with the y values which is the growth rates. So you're taking the x values, the, the pop current population, and the y values, the growth rate, and by lining them up, you get a new graph. 
Now this graph looks pretty similar to the old graph. It's not exactly the same. It's a little bit more skewed to the left, and that has to do with population um, increasing faster. Uh, but if, if we didn't have uh, if we didn't have such a a, a, a a monotonically increasing population or, or a population that increased rather linearly uh, in this range, then you wouldn't have this same, this picture wouldn't be the same. So now that we have our two pictures, we could decide we want to find the best line that fit, fits our uh, setup depending on which of the different regimes we're in, that's going to dictate to us which type of growth function do we want, one that depends on the time or one that depends on the current population. And luckily in our, uh, in our growth functions, oh, sorry, here, I thought that was right here. Remember that in our growth functions, we can use either the time or the population. So that information is available to us. And depending on which of these two looks more like the, tra the graph we want the trend to be with, we would uh, adjust our growth function accordingly. So um, the rest of this uh, section has to do with what would happen if you wanted to put in this line here. And so the suggestion here is, let's say, We've created this plot that shows us what the, the actual data is saying for uh, growth rate over time. And we want, a, we want to put a line in here. And so this is a little bit of some of the art of mathematical modeling, which is finding the right line that we feel is the best representative of the trend. So if we decided this was a line, then we would draw, uh, we would draw this line in here and say, oh, uh, maybe this is a good line. If you wanted to maybe shift it down a little bit so that it more encompasses the trends here, then we could do that and figure out what the the population is going to be using using a more current data. We could do that, but this line kind of does a pretty good representation starting in 1970. And so we, play, we, we specify what maybe the slope and the intercept are, right? This is a point slope version of, of a line where if you specify the point is at 1970 comma 0.2, that's right here, 1970 comma 0.2, that's the intercept. And this slope, if we wiggle the slope a little bit, that would change the angle of this line. So if you play around with the slope and the intercept, maybe you can actually find a, a line that you like better. Um, but again, here's what the goal is. Now that we've figured out this, this line, which we define this function, we use lin space to uh, plot different points, give different t values for the points on this line, and then we applied the function to that array. By applying that function to the array, then we're, we're plotting the points on this gray line. We're really plotting every five, five years and connecting it. That's what that's doing here. So this plot alpha, plot t array alpha array, that's giving us this model for what we think the growth rate is over time. So now the next step would be to create a uh, a growth function that takes in time, population, and the system variables, and outputs growth that's given by this function, alpha function, intercept plus slope times t minus 1970. You integrate that into the, um, into the run simulation as this is your growth function, and then you can you can generate the data for what the future projection is for the population. All right, let's stop there and uh, see you later.